What is up you guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name's Mackenzie. If you're not new, thank you for coming back. So first things first, sorry for that little bit of a break there, but I did want to get a holiday restock in just for my longtime customers, so I had to get that out of the way first. Today's video was going to be a glass on glass mosaic, but per usual with glass on glass, that adhesive is taking absolutely forever, and I miss you guys, so I'm back with another video. So today's topic is a question I get asked about all of the time, and that is how I photograph all of my iridescent glass or glass in general. So the trick to photographing iridescent glass has a lot to do with the weather, and we're gonna get all into that in this video. So yeah, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I photograph all of my stained glass work to post on Instagram and to post on my online shop and sell them. So if that sounds like something you're into, Let's get started. Okay, so before we start moving around the house and me kind of just showing you exactly how I do photograph and take videos of all my work, I'm gonna kind of explain the why behind what we're doing. So you heard me mention that photographing iridescent glass has a lot to do with the weather and specifically, I mean the sun. So I don't care what type of artificial light you have in your house, if you have filming lights, light bars, soft boxes, none of it will do what the sun does, point blank period, it just does not work. I specifically plan all of my photographing days of all of my work around the weather. It has to be pure sun, it just does. So there are specific types of iridescent glass, which we'll talk about a little later, that does almost do better in cloudier or overcast days as far as reflecting accurately. But you need full sunlight days to show the actual true color of the glass, whether it's iridescent or not, when you're just on a straight on shot and not trying to show the iridescence. So straight up, you need the sunlight. You have to plan accordingly. Every single time I have a restock, I look way ahead into the weather and figure out what day is going to work for photographing all of my pieces for that current restock. So again, you need sunlight, it has to be pure sunlight. You cannot use any type of artificial lights. It is just not going to do what the sunlight does if you're looking for good, accurate, quality photos of your iridescent glass. So with all that being said, I'm gonna kind of move you guys around to the different spots in my house because I do have very specific areas in which all of my pieces can be photographed and those areas change because as the year comes and goes, the sun is moving. So you need to know all of the areas in your house and what time of year you're going to be able to photograph your iridescent glass if this is a long-term job for you. So I have specifically three different areas in my house in which kind of go back and forth between spring, summer, fall, and winter where I can photograph all of my piece or just different kinds of pieces. So for an example, I have two areas in my little sunroom and then I have one in my spare bedroom in the front that I can specifically photograph my sun catchers, but that is only for maybe a quarter of the year and that happens to be over winter. So maybe a third of the year. So starting from early November until February, I'll be able to photograph my sun catchers accurately in that front room and then after that, it's a no-go. There is nowhere in my house that can accurately photograph those sun catchers anymore. It sounds ridiculous, but that's true. It's just the way it is, I've accepted it. There is, again, no artificial light that does it. That is a section of my house that has the wall where I need it to be and the sun coming in where I need it to come in to get those accurate photos and videos. So I have those three sections of my house that I know I can go to to photograph all of my pieces in that one section in the front where I know I can photograph my sun catchers for a part of the year. So now I'm going to show you guys exactly how I work my camera. So I don't use any of my nicer cameras, my DSLR or my G7X. I use just my regular phone because I can quickly adjust the brightness back and forth to accurately photograph the iridescent glass and I'll show you guys exactly what I mean in a second. So let's go into the main spot in my house so I can show you guys exactly how I photograph a standard piece of iridescent glass. Okay guys, so we're at the end of the window that I have, so we're gonna have to make this quick. This is the area of my house in which I can photograph my sun catchers and this is the only area. 
Not only that, like I said, I've got maybe a quarter or a third of the year that it works right here, and I only have about a two hour time frame window during the day that this area works. I've got it down to a science. So there's only a two hour window in which the sun is coming in here and makes a shadow on the back of this wall to be able to accurately reflect the rainbows in the sun catcher itself. So again, I'm gonna do my best to show you guys exactly how I record it and what I'm looking for as I'm doing so. I'm going to screen record on my phone and show you guys exactly how I adjust the brightness to get what I'm looking for. Okay, so this is going to be tricky to get on camera because I'm having to use my opposite hands as to not block you guys. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. So I've got my phone here, I've got my camera open and I'm going to hit record and as I do so I am going to lower the brightness on my camera so I'm going to start recording the video I'm going to tap the screen and lower the brightness on my camera lowering the brightness isn't as important for a situation like this as it is with our standstill photos which you guys will see in a second and I'm just going to spin this sun catcher back and forth a few times and that's it. So as far as moving pieces, sun catchers, this is the area that I'm going to do that in. Everything else gets done in the back area of my house in the main section where almost all of my photos get taken. So let's move over there. Okay guys, so we are in another section of my house now and this is the wall in which I photograph almost all of my pieces exclusively. So this room in particular has a large window over here and that's that lets a ton of the light in once the sun starts setting or going down around 12, 1, 2 in the afternoon, depending on what time of year it is. So I've got a ton of light coming in this window and a shaded wall on the back here. Once the sun sets to be beyond these windows, then it's going to be too late. We cannot have direct sunlight because then you will see the actual center bright sun versus lighting up the entirety of the piece itself. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I mean. So say I've got my little tree star right here. When we're photographing this, we want to one, show the background. And of course, we're not getting any of this other stuff in the pictures. We're zooming in enough so we don't get any of my actual decor or home inside these pictures as well. So when I photograph, I'm coming in nice and close to be able to see the star itself and I'm going to take a picture to show the underlying color of this piece. Then I'm going to turn it towards the window showing all of the iridescent itself. So I'm backing up here a little bit just because this piece is a little bit wider. So I'm backing up to get all of the piece lit up in iridescent. So I'm going to tap the center of the piece, lower the brightness on my phone, to really show that iridescent and snap some pictures. So I don't particularly like to lock the brightness down just because sometimes it can blur the photo. In the background of this photo, you can see these nails, these holes, because I do need all of these things to help hold the pictures in place if I'm not holding it by hand. So of course, we're gonna have to go in and edit all of these holes and scratches on the wall out behind it, but it's inevitable. I'm a stained glass artist. Kind of damaging the wall from hanging stained glass things on it is just par for the course. So pretend I'm selling this actual triple moon piece. So what I'm going to do is hang it on the wall and the first thing we're going to do is just try to get a picture of the blue undertone, the base of the glass itself. So I'm going to back up, have normal screen brightness on, snap a photo, then I'm going to lean towards the right, illuminating that iridescent, tap the center of my phone, lower the screen brightness, and take the photo because that looks a whole lot more accurate than it does just normally on camera without making any of those adjustments. I mean, granted, this iridescent is pretty beautiful and it does well on its own. So maybe this will be a better example here. So I'm gonna hang this moon. First thing I'm gonna do is try to get a picture of the actual purple glass itself. Focus in, keep the screen brightness normal, take the picture, lean towards the right, illuminating all of that iridescent, tap the moon, lower the screen brightness. That is how you accurately show the iridescent. It's all about quickly adjusting that screen brightness, getting the pictures in normal lighting as you need to, to show the normal purple, and then lowering the brightness to show the iridescent. Okay, so. 
After I take a couple of those, I'm going to hold my moon up just because it does look like a different color when it's off of the wall. I'm gonna take one more picture showing the actual purple. And that's it. After that, I'm going to do the same thing in the window, which I cannot show you guys outside, but I will show you guys the edited photo. And I'm upping the brightness this time. So I adjust the brightness all the way up, which blows out the background and focuses on the moon, showing an accurate representation of that color. So again, guys, it's all about the sun. It's all about being able to adjust that screen brightness on your phone or your camera brightness. And that is going to really help accurately represent the iridescent glass itself. It definitely takes some practice and you have to get good at just kind of adjusting your hand and quickly adjusting the brightness on your phone. But once you get good at that, you'll be able to photograph all of these pieces no problem. You just wanna show the actual color of the piece, show what it looks like when it has its iridescent reflection, show what it looks like in a window, show what it looks like up against a wall, and that's pretty much it. That is how I photograph all of my pieces. Okay guys, before we wrap this video up, let's just quickly talk about editing. So largely I use an app called in shot to edit both my photos and videos and if i need to edit out something from a photo then i'll use facetune so let's start with the video of the sun catcher using in shot so in shot is really where you're going to use the color adjustments to your advantage now again the goal here is to make this look the most accurate to how it looks in person because iridescent glass and these reflections do not show up on camera the way they do in person, my goal is to edit them to look the most realistic. So I'm going to go in with the color saturation, up it. I'm going to up the contrast, lower the brightness, and put a vignette around the video just to really make those rainbows stand out the most accurate. This app is pretty self-explanatory. Once you go in and start to play with it, you should be able to figure it out pretty quickly and then you'll end up with a much better looking video in the end like you see here. That is much more of an accurate representation as to what you see in real life versus our original video. Okay, and we're pretty much doing the same exact thing for editing all of our photos. We're just going to go in, pick which one we want to edit. You can see here I'm just centering it, making sure it looks even. Then I'm gonna go in and start adjusting those colors, the brightness, all of those things again. So I'm upping the saturation, I'm going to up the contrast. I'll probably turn down the warmth a little bit as well just because these aren't a pure white wall. Then I'm going to bring down the brightness on those iridescent specific photos and maybe again put the vignette around it if I'm wanting it to look a little bit darker. And that's pretty much the basis for how I edit most of my photos just because all iridescent glass photos and edits pretty similarly. So with the bright background photos, I'm really upping that saturation, really upping that contrast in bringing down the brightness on that photo. And that's gonna help the actual color stand out much more. Then we're gonna edit this triple moon. So this triple moon can be a little bit trickier just because it has that certain type of iridescent and that sun catcher drop at the bottom looks very yellow on camera. So I'm gonna edit it as I normally do, but then I'm gonna put it into Facetune. So Facetune is where I can edit out this yellow looking jewel at the bottom because it doesn't look yellow in person. So I'm just going to use the whiten tool, get rid of all that yellow. Then I'm gonna start editing the background to get rid of all those wall scratches and any imperfections that I don't like. So you can use the smooth tool or you can just completely patch it out. You guys will have to let me know if you want full dedicated videos on actually editing with these two apps, but we would be here all day if I was going through and showing you each tool and how they work. So yeah, let me know if you guys wanna see a separate dedicated video about that and I can absolutely do that. Okay guys, that is it for today's video. Hopefully I covered everything. Of course, so if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below. But yeah, I think that's it for today's video guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video if you did. Comment down below and let me know what do you wanna see next and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.